one in your hymnal 431 I have found a friend who is all to me <clears throat> his love is ever true let's all stand together as we sing saved saved on that first together I found a friend who is all singing man i'm glad i'm saved Amen. and uh can come and sing a song like that good to see you back in church tonight boy good morning this morning wasn't it Amen. and uh good meal my oh my great food everyone did a wonderful job thank you so much and uh decorations were great thank you ladies who got that ready and everybody who helped uh get things cleaned up afterwards thank you it was a wonderful wonderful time and we're looking forward to what the lord has in store for us tonight my brother kirshner is here Amen. Amen. And uh, he had me looking at sermons in my Bible uh, here as he comes at 625 and uh, added some gray hair to my head. But uh, he is here and we're looking forward to what the Lord has for us tonight. All right, let's let's bow in prayer together, shall we? Father, thank you for this evening. Thank you for another opportunity for us to gather together. And Father, we simply bow before you to ask that this service be what you would want it to be. Yeah in each one of our hearts and lives. And Lord, we yield ourselves to you. I pray the Holy Spirit would have free course in each one of our hearts. And uh, Lord, we'd listen carefully to the message tonight from Brother Kirshner and uh, what you would have to say to each one of our hearts tonight. And so control the service. May Christ be exalted tonight and may you draw us closer to him because we were here. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated. 333, if you'd turn your hymnal with me. 333, I have found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. He's the lily of the valley. On that first, let's sing it together. I have found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. The lily of the valley, in him alone I see. All I need to cleanse and make me fully whole. In sorrow he's my comfort, in trouble he's my strength. He tells me every care on him to roll. Hallelujah, he's a lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He all my griefs have taken, and all my sorrows borne. In 
temptation, he's my strong and mighty tower. I have all for him forsaken, and all my idols torn from my heart, and now he keeps me by his power. Now, quickly, some announcements for us. Uh, regular schedule this week, Wednesday night, uh, the children's clubs begin to meet again. The Glow Club, which is uh, for the older children, uh, they'll meet Wednesday night. And then the Pee Wee Patch Club will be meeting as well. And that'll all kick off this Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock. And, of course, we'll have our Bible study here in the auditorium. Now, Friday night is Reformers Unanimous right here, and it is our fifth anniversary of Reformers Unanimous, and uh, we want to have a big open house. Everyone's invited to come. If you ever just wondered, uh, what do they do in here on Friday night? Uh, why don't you come find out Friday evening? Uh, we have a special guest coming uh, down from Bridgeport, Michigan, First Baptist Church, uh, Brother Scott Cowling. He's been the director there. Wow. I think yeah, 15 years or something like that. They were one of the first churches that ever started the RU after Rockford and uh, just uh, does a tremendous job. They have a great chapter. Uh, he's going to be here. He'll be uh, speaking, and uh, you're going to enjoy Brother Cowling. He is an amazing, amazing guy and uh, lots of energy and excitement. And uh, come on out and join us. Uh, we're going to feed you good afterwards, and uh, it'll, it'll be a great time, 7 o'clock. Uh, Friday evening, okay? So come out and help us celebrate five years of Reformers Unanimous, all right? And then, of course, uh, Saturday at 10 a.m. is the memorial service for Marion Skinner, all right? And we need some help. Uh, they have uh, Susan, of course, Callahan's coming in and her daughter. And, of course, there's a lot of family that are already here in town, extended family. And uh, we are having the service here at church, and then we're providing a meal for all of them afterwards and it's going to be somewhere probably between 60 and 80 people so picture what you saw this morning and that's what we're going to have saturday uh, for the funeral okay so uh, we need help with that okay uh, what we need right now and i'm going to try to do this quickly okay and uh, so get your hand ready to go up all right uh, five ladies that would help my wife uh, set up serve and clean up uh, you have to be here by 8 30 on saturday okay let me see your hand. Put them up. Felicia, Emma. Okay. Leanne. Got choir. Jan. Okay. Am I missing one? One more. We'll do it. Mary Lou. All right. Now I need ladies to bake pies. Uh, five ladies that would make two pies each. Five ladies to bake two pies. Brenda will do two. Margaret. Margaret, the pie maker. Okay. Anybody else make a couple pies? Pie makers? Tanya. Emma Norman. Okay, Emma Norman, you're in. All right, we got it, we got it. Now, we're going to get some fried chicken. They say we need $120 to get chicken, okay? Here's where the men can jump in, okay? A uh, $10 or $20 donation to get the chicken for the meal, okay? You don't have to cook it, you know, you just got to open up your wallet and put 10 bucks or 20 bucks out, okay? Uh, who can do it? Dave? Dave, that was 20 Okay. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Come on. Just a second, Mark. I'll get you. Don't worry about it. 
I didn't get the other one. The Peric, did you say? I got Coleman. All right, that's good. No, that's good. I've got, I've got it. I've got everybody here because then Brother Kirk's going to take up the slack. All right. Good. Um, there's a line here about roles, and it says Jessica Norman. You can get those. You know where I assume you must know what she's talking about. Okay, good. When the roll is called up yonder, Jessica will be there. <laughs> All right. Now this says three number ten cans of green beans. Anybody know what number ten? What's number ten? Big industrial kind you get. Ninety-six ounce, they say, green bean can. Mary Lou. Don't worry about that. Just bring the can in. We'll take care of the bacon and onion. All right. Who else was that back here behind me? Okay. One more. Nope. Heather who? Heather Barnion. Bottled water. Bottled water. Uh, 24 pack. I need three of those. Who's getting a 40 pack? Okay, Jeanette. Um, Brother Ron, we'll get some water. Marla. Brother Yoder, your hand was up. Okay, I need to see you after church too, by the way. Okay, got to ask you about something. Okay, and then it says here sweet tea, five gallons. I'm going to put Tanya down for that. <laughs> sweet tea, five gallons. Don't have to volunteer, you're drafted. All right. <laughs> Tanya makes good sweet tea. Now, the last thing here is any of you, if any of you have a garden, said like tomatoes and cucumbers from the garden that you'd like to, to give, anybody has that? Just bring those in uh, Friday, by Friday, okay? Yeah, well, I don't, yeah. And that's why we don't need them today, you know what I mean? Just uh, fresh as they can. If you have something like that, feel free to bring those in and they'll use them for vegetables, okay? Great. Thank you. That's great. Marvelous. All right. Last thing I've got is uh, Monday night, a week from tomorrow night, is the ladies' night out, and I know you're going to be going bowling, okay? So uh, mark that down, 6.30, August 29th. More details will be coming uh, as they become available, all right? Now, let's take a moment. Anybody here tonight for the first time? I'm looking around. Don't think I see any first-timers. All right. Very good. Let's hear from the choir.
193 in your hymnal, 193, I traveled alone upon this lonesome way, Jesus and me, 193, <clears throat> on that first together, I traveled alone upon this lonesome way, my burdens were heavy and dark was my day, I looked for a friend, not knowing that he had all of the time been looking for me. Now it is Jesus and me, or is tomorrow. For every heartache and every sorrow, I know that I can depend upon my new found friend. And so to the end, it's Jesus and me, that road may be long to heaven's pearly gates. I know that it's narrow, I know that it's straight, but Jesus is there through eternity. We'll travel along, just Jesus and me. For every heartache and every sorrow, I know that I can depend upon my newfound friend. And so to the end, it's Jesus and me forever I'll sing of his great love to me forever i'll tell it on land and on sea i'll stay by his side contented i'll be for all of my life it's jesus and me now it is jesus and me That's great. Let's turn over to 275, if you would. 275, when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrow like sea billows roll. As we stand, turn to 275, it is well, it is well. Stand with me, if you would. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea Billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul, it is well with my soul. It And greet one another. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guest. We'll come back and sing those last stanzas together.
My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. Let's sing that third together. My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole is nailed to the tree. And I fare it no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, oh, my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. And Lord, haste the day. Clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound, and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. said amen be seated if you will the ushers will come and get our offering tonight brother david their envelopes back there if anybody needs a special envelope if you'd like to put something in tonight for brother kirshner i know you haven't heard him yet but uh go by faith okay and uh but he he operates by faith and uh doesn't doesn't ask for anything to come he just uh does that as a ministry and relies on the people of god to uh, take care of his needs and uh, let's be a blessing to him this evening if you need an envelope and you like one just slip your hand up Dave will give it to you right now uh, if you'd like to be a blessing to him uh, just put your hand up and uh, Dave's on the move there's one over here uh, anybody on this side uh, right over here a couple of them up here brother brother Dave all right Place that down here, you got this one, Brother Taylor? Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. Great. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Appreciate it. You're gonna, you're in for a treat. We're gonna have the offering. Then um, I'm gonna have Brother Reed introduce Brother Kirshner. They've been known each other for uh, wow, almost 25 years, and uh, uh, just uh, met in Russia, I believe, and so. Let Brother Bob introduce him, and then, of course, uh, Nikki will sing, and then Brother Kirsten will come, and uh, he'll be, as as you can see, he'll be in character uh, as he does the, just like we talked about today, and uh, he'll be the man he's telling you about, and uh, you're going to enjoy this. I've, I've seen bits of it, thanks to the Internet, and uh, I purposefully did not watch it all. I wanted to hear it tonight from him in person, and uh, so I... I just uh, caught little bits of it, and uh, you're going to enjoy it. It's really a blessing. All right, let's pray for our offering this evening. Father, thank you for the privilege to give, and thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us. Thank you for how you take care of us and provide for us, and, Lord, certainly beyond what any of us would deserve. And, Lord, I pray your blessing on our offering tonight. I pray that you'll use it to take care of the needs of your work here as well as be a blessing to Brother Kirshner for coming our way this evening. So bless gift and give her alike now, please, in Jesus' name, amen.
I'm uh, really excited to have Brother Kirshner here. It uh, has been about 25 years, 1992. We met in Moscow, Russia, and uh, he, uh, by the end of our time there, we were th- I was there for about three and a half months, and by the end of the time there, I uh, really considered uh, Dean a uh, mentor of sorts. Um, he, I was, I had my 16th birthday there, so, I was, you know, um, and uh, he just really was uh, just encouraging, and I, I really, really appreciated him, and I don't know even that he knows how much I really appreciated him at the time. Um, he has a, um, he's, uh, has an amazing uh, background. He, uh, does he look like a sheep shearer to you? Right? I, I believe, uh, if I remember right, you shore sheep and you put roofs on. And uh, that was his life before ministry. And, um, and uh, now he, he does work with Gospel Link International. I hope he might tell you a little bit about that uh, later on. But um, it's just been a, a real blessing to, even through the years, uh, we don't communicate very often, but uh, when we do, it's like picking right up where you left off. And um, that happens with uh, the children of God. It's, it's exciting. So um, without uh, too much more ado, I'd like to uh, have Nikki come. She'll uh, sing a special. And then uh, Brother Dean, as uh, soon as she's finished, you come right on up. Добрый вечер, я очень рад быть с вами. Меня зовут Иван Васильевич Мусеев. 
и давно я хотел приходить к вам, а вы не понимаете меня. Вы, вы not, you're not understanding what I'm saying, I'm sorry. Uh, does anyone speak Russian here? Maybe translate a little bit. Чуть-чуть. Uh, Okay, может быть, well, I, actually, Russian is not my first language either. So I was simply introducing myself. I, I said my name is Ivan Vasilievich Moseev. Ivan is, is like you say Ivan, but oh, that's such accent, wrong accent. We call it Ivan, now, but kind of like nickname, you have Robert and Bobby and John and Johnny. We have Ivan, and my mama calls me Vanya, Papa calls me Vanya. Brother, sister, call me Vanya. Friends, they call me Vanya, so you can call me Vanya. And Vasilievich is Ochistva. That is, in my culture, we honor Papa. So we all have father names. That means Ivan Vasilievich, Papa, his name is Vasily. But that's usually only formal situations, like Mr. Mrs. And then last name is Moseev. Now, that should be easy for you, I think so, because you're like Christians, and so you know Moses. It's, it's, I'm not Jewish, but I have last name, Moseev. And so... Uh, Moseev is, is like cross Red Sea, Ten Commandments. So Ivan Vasilievich Moseev, I simply introduced myself. And like I said, my name, if I'm not really Russian. I was born in Soviet Union, 1951. And we have to learn Russian where I live. I live in Moldova. Now, how many of you know where Moldova is? Oh, very good. Educated people. That's pretty good. Uh, tell, how many don't know where Moldova is? Oh, no, that's 50-50. <laughs> that's okay. Most people in Moldova, they don't know anything about, uh, anything about uh, Grove City, Ohio, either. So you're okay. <laughs> but uh, I think you know Ukraine. Ukraine is famous, big, big country there, big place. They grow lots of rye bread and just good, good farming land there. And then there's Romania. So if you kind of picture Ukraine is big loaf of bread and and Romania is another piece of bread. Moldova is like bologna in the middle. Or <laughs> sausage, we call it sausiska. Uh, not a big country, not, no, no big industry. We, are, we have beautiful climate comes off Mediterranean, so we grow grapes and good farming, things like that. But, but we are, we, it's beautiful. If you get the chance to come, come. Jesus says not everything consists of what you have. It's not about big cars and nice buildings. Sometimes there's, there's relationships and community and peace. And I grow up in that kind of thing. You see, I am Christian. My papa is not big money. He has seven children. He is, works on communal farms. But he has faith in God. And that is a wealth beyond all riches and wisdom in, in, in Christ Jesus. And so... It's difficult, though, in my country. It, let me ask a question. How many of you grow up in Christian homes? How many of you grow up in Christian homes? That is also majority. That is privilege. I'm not saying that is always easy. I understand. People are people. But it is, it is privilege to know who God is. And most of my classmates, again, under Soviet state, we hear nothing. In fact, we hear there is no God. We hear there is only faith and and mankind can build utopia. We don't, there's no religious education for me, and except at home. Now, in my country, when I'm growing up, it is against the law for young people to gather. It's no, it, you can go to jail. But my father and my mama, they stand strong, and they teach me Bible. I know what you do in America, and I'm not saying this is wrong, but just listen to me. You have freedom, so it's okay. But, but sometimes we say, we encourage children, pray prayer. Ask Jesus into heart. Ask Jesus to be Savior. In my country, we don't do that so much. Now, we understand salvation. But we read, Jesus says, you count cost. Nobody go to war unless they count, count cost. And sometimes you are three years old, you just do what mommy and papa tell you to do. And I know Jesus say, you come to me with faith like child. I understand that. But in my country, you have to count big cost. And so usually families, they tell about Jesus, and they explain it, and maybe we receive it by faith. But it is not till we are teenagers that we make public confession because we have to count cost. And I remember when I am 16, I don't just say nice prayer. I come for my church, and I repent. And I am not ashamed to call Jesus my Lord. And I know 
what I am saying and I know what I am doing. And I receive baptism because that is sign of covenant between me and Jesus. He says, count cost. Take up cross. One problem here, I think so, in your, your culture, it's I can be Christian, go through church, and not take up cross. I can live in comfort. I have nice worldly things. Now, I'm not wishing persecution on you. I'm not saying it's a good thing. But Jesus said, if any man follow me, he'll, he'll find a cross. He'll take up. That's a, that's a suffering. That's a sacrifice. Oh, and he's worthy of all sacrifice. I've kind of come to tell you my story, but it's not, I don't know so much my story. I hope you hear Jesus' story in this. Because we, you, you have English funny word you call his story. It's whose story? Oh, it's his story. And you see, when I am 18, I become, I become Christian at 16. But at 18, another big event happened to me. I joined the army. Now, how many here have joined, been in the army? Okay, congratulations. That's very good. And you say, well, you are a Christian. Why do you join the army? Uh, let me explain to you. And especially in the Soviet Union, you say, maybe, why should you be a soldier in a big, bad country? Well, I don't have choice. If you are 18 years old in USSR, you are a soldier. And, but honestly, I, I don't want to shirk my responsibility. God says, honor king, obey laws, be at peace with all men. And... Tell you the truth, I am, I am poor country boy in Moldova. I, Papa doesn't have a car. We never go anywhere. Going to army is like big adventure. It's opportunity. I have to do it. I don't really have a choice. But I kind of am looking forward to it. And you know why we everyone have to go? Because we are at war. We are fighting you. It's not bombs and things, but it's called Cold War. In 1971, we are not happy with America, and we are scared of them. So every young man at 18, he has to take up a rifle and he has to learn. But I tell you the truth, boot camp doesn't matter if it's American Army or Russian Army. It is the same. You do your push-ups, your calisthenics, ras, dva, tri, chitiri, just the same. And another thing, it was interesting to me because, again, I live in Moldova. It's way down in the south. And so I get thrown in boot camp. It's very interesting. We have... Guys from far out in East, the, ta the Tajiks and the Kazakhs, they kind of have funny looking eyes. And then you have tall, funny looking boys from Lithuania. They, I, they come over here and play basketball today, I think so. But we had, then you have the boys from Moscow that they think they are better than us because they speak good, pure Russian. And they laugh at me because I am Southern redneck. And uh, <laughs> you are laughing, you think you have rednecks here, uh huh? Maybe we have more in common. But I tell you, and the boot camp, it's the same. It doesn't matter where you're from. You are at attention, and you do what you are told. And honestly, again, I am glad to serve my country. This is exciting to be in the mix of such so many people. But one thing I am concerned about, and I, I am about probably three, four weeks in the boot camp. And I remember I was running one day, and I'm, I'm praying to Jesus. I said, Lord Jesus, I, want, I, I know I am soldier in this army, but I am also a soldier in your army. I don't want to lose sight of that. I want to be a good soldier. Show me how to be a good soldier. Show me, show me how to do it. In fact, Lord Jesus, and I pray this prayer, give me time to spend with you because I'm in boot camp. I know everyone prays somehow in boot camp. But I have, I, I think in your army you have freedom of, freedom of choice or you know you have Sunday or you have chaplains, you have these kind of religious things. Ho, oh, ho, not in Red Army. There is no place for spiritual life at all. We are totally devoid of that. We, everything can be supernaturally, or, or technologically and naturally explained. There is no supernatural. And, but I know a Bible verse. If you draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. If you feel far away from God, guess who moved? Right? And I don't want to. Move away from God. I don't want to drift away from him. And so I'm praying, said, Lord, can you give me more time? Now, you are Americans. I don't know what you do to wake up. You drink your coffee or go to strange internet, get news. My favorite time and thing to do in the morning is spend time with God. And I figured out if I could press my 
uniform, have shoes polished right when bugle sounds at 5.30. I can get up. Now, this is actually after boot camp. Oh, boot camp, you never know when you're going to get. You get drug out of bed, and you sleep any chance you get. But I make it through boot camp. And we transfer, actually, from Odessa over to Kirch. And I find there that I have time. If I get up right when call comes, that there's a place I can go. It, in daytime, it is diesel mechanic shop. But early in the morning, no one is there. It's not very aromatic prayer closet, but I am alone. And I have a chance to spend with my God. And I just begin day, and I focus on him, and I say, Lord Jesus, I love you. I belong to you first. I am your soldier. I remember Paul Wright in Dur Hard, and says, good soldier of Jesus Christ, show me how to do that. And, and I pray. It is my favorite time of day. Amen. Favorite time. Of day. I'm not so much against coffee, but you need God more than you need coffee. <laughs> Sometimes your body needs kickstart, but your spirit needs life. It shows in how you spend your time. Your time schedule shows priorities. I don't have very much time. I have to pray in secret. You know, Jesus says he blesses in secret. So does Soviet Union. <laughs> <laughs> but God sees me. And he knows me. And, and I, get, I, I pray for my family back home. I'm praying sometimes for people I'm meeting. And then one day it happens. I've been doing this two, three weeks, and then one day it happens, I realize I'm praying. I, there's no watch, no clock. It's, it's garage. And, oh, no, Vanya. Vanya, you, you pray too long. And I look out, and sure enough, my place is empty. All squad is assembled for PT. <laughs> Sergeant Strelkov is not so happy. So, Moseyev. You did us a favor and showed up. You better have a good reason why you're not here. I'm sorry, sir. What happened again, sir? What were you, writing a letter home to your mommy? Maybe you were in the toilet. Where were you, Moseev? I don't know what to say to him, so I tell him the truth. Uh, I was praying, sir. Now, Sergeant Strelkov is not a religious man, but he knows Orthodox Church has kind of saint days, and you pray to saints like St. Leon and St. Ole and whom were you praying to? Well, that is a strange question to me, so again, I tell him the truth. I was praying to God, sir. <laughs> and kind of like you, some of my comrades, they begin to laugh and chuckle, but he thinks I am trying to be funny, sarcastic. But say if you will see me immediately when we finish PT, report to my office. Yes, sir. So we go through morning drill, and I have to come in and see Sergeant Strelko. He says, Moseyev, it is bad enough that you show a lack of discipline and a lack of punctuality, but I will not tolerate this kind of talk. Are you religious? Sir, it is not against the law to pray, sir. It's not against the law to pray, that's true. But you know, in this army, we live on muscle. We live on our strength. We don't need a God. We don't call on mythological beings. You want to pray? We'll put you on your knees. You will do the entire barracks with a mop and a bucket, or a rag and a bucket, no mop. Now, barracks is like place, maybe the size of this room. Usually, every day, two or three of us are assigned to do it. And we move beds, swab it down. But this morning, Vanya has to do it by himself with no mop. And I'm down on my knees cleaning floor. And my comrades, they go by and say, hey, I was supposed to be doing the barracks. How come Vanya's doing it? Oh, they want to put him on his knees. Remember, he was praying. Praying? What is he, some kind of religious nut? I don't know. Look, he's smiling. <laughs> oh, brother, sister. Jesus says, blessed are they that are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Amen. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you, and men shall revile you and persecute you and say, all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. I know I am troubled because I am not on time, but he is making fun of me because I am praying. Oh, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so 
I am singing. I am not, I'm not in his face. I'm not disrespectful, but my heroes are church. In my church in Moldova, Mama would say, see this man. They arrest him because he has Bible. See this man. He goes to Siberia for three months. He'd lose his job because he comes to house of prayer. I grew up, my heroes are believers. So take up cross. I don't think too much of it. Wash floor. Some of my comrades, they make fun of me, laugh at me a little bit. No, so problem. That happens in the army. But three days later, they bring me before Captain Yarmik. Captain Yarmik is not so much older than I am, but he is in political side of military. He is rising. It's his job to take insubordinates, whip them into shape. Well, Sam, I understand there was a lack of discipline on your part three days ago. Yes, sir, I'm sorry, sir, I was late for roll call. It won't happen again, sir. That's right, and you made some kind of religious marks and made a show and spectacle. I'm sorry, sir. I mean no offense. I want to respect all my officers, sir. Good, because I have something for you to sign. And he dropped some papers in front of me. Now, in Red Army, we have lots of papers. You hear of red tape? Guess where that come from, <laughs> OK? <laughs> But I'm, you know, they ask you, Social Security, Mama, Papa's name, where you are from, but I never see such papers. These papers say, I, Ivan Vasilievich Moseev, do ascertain and declare there is no God, and there is place for me to sign my name. I, Ivan Vasilievich Moseev, do not believe in spiritual world. There is no supernatural place for me to sign my name. I, Ivan Vasilievich Moseev, only believe in science and do not accept mythological spiritual Sir, uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't think I'm able to sign these papers. I didn't ask you your opinion. I gave you an order. You will sign those papers or you will defy the orders of a commanding officer. Yes, sir, I'm sorry, sir, but I am also a citizen of the United Soviet Socialist Republic, sir. And our Constitution, Article 3, says, promises every citizen right of conscience. If I, if I sign these papers, sir, it will violate my conscience and thus the Constitution, sir. Oh, they don't like it so much when you know Constitution. Do you know yours? Well, say, if I don't want a political lecture, you will sign these papers or you will pay the consequences. I will put you into solitary confinement without food until you sign these papers. But there's not so much debate. I, I'm not going to deny my God. And so they put me in solitary confinement. In it's not dungeon, it's not big torture chamber, but I sit here and I feel sorry for myself. I have little cot, little window, but I am by myself. And I feel like, Lord Jesus, I, I try to be a good soldier, I want to do my job, I don't want to be a problem. You ever maybe have so many problems and you you feel sorry for yourself. Let me tell you the truth. There are two sides, two perspectives of every problem. There is your side, and there is your father's side. And half our problem is looking at these things only from our side. And I was sitting here feeling sorry for myself, and Holy Spirit, speak to me. I don't hear a voice, but I just, he, he prompt me, Vanya, you remember back in boot camp, you pray? What do you ask for? Oh, yeah. Pravena, yes, I will. I, I was asking for more time. Well, now I have all the time that I want. <laughs> I think God answered my prayer back there in, in diesel mechanic shop, but no, now I am praying all the time. Not only that, but I am fasting too. <laughs> right? God has great sense of humor. Suddenly, I begin to rejoice. I begin to pray about more things. I begin to focus and bring more Bible verses to mind and focus on Jesus. My spirits are lifted. What changed? 
Do my circumstances change? They don't change. My perspective changes. Suddenly I see what God is doing. Some of you need to look at what you're going through a little different. Maybe bad job, maybe marriage, maybe finances. What is God trying to do? You get his perspective. And you get yoked with Jesus. You start going in his path, which I tell you is joy, peace, purpose. Now, I lie down. Around midnight, they knock on my door. They must say, have attention. Follow me. I don't know where we're going, but they escort me into a room. I'm kind of sleepy. Attention. They're standing at attention. There's three officers. They're standing there. They have notepads, and they begin to ask me questions. Why do you believe in God? Oh, great question. I don't get asked that question so much in the Soviet Union. So I explain to them, have you, do you have any evidence of God? Have you ever seen God? Oh, that is a funny question, right? You don't see God. God you, you, faith is evidence of things unseen. So I share that with them. They're kind of a little bit surprised at my answer. They don't know such things. And so then they ask another question. Must say, uh, what, have, have you, why do you believe in heaven? Have you ever seen heaven? Have you ever seen God? I say, oh, no, no, but God, you don't see spirit world. It's like you don't see, uh, like love of mama, you don't see wind. You, many things you don't see, but they are real. And they kind of look at each other and write their answers down. They ask me questions about 15, 20 minutes. Why do you believe in life after death? Oh, that's another good question. And I am excited that I get to witness to my officers. <laughs> now, this never happens before in boot camp. Okay? And so I go back to my room. I'm rejoicing. Thank you, Jesus. What great opportunity. Maybe I plant seeds. And I lay down and I fall asleep. And I'm only asleep a little bit time, maybe like half, maybe like 10 minutes. I don't know. There's no clock. And they knock on my door. Well, save attention. So I don't know what. Follow me. We come back in the same room. And I look up there. There's a clock. And they, it's only one hour later. So I've only been in there maybe 15 minutes. But this time, there are three different guys. And, and they begin to say, attention. And to my surprise, they begin to ask the same question. At first, I think, well, maybe these other guys told them they want to know the same question. So I was like, well, OK, why do I believe in God? And I've never seen God. Why do I believe in heaven? And I'm telling and explaining these things. I get to witness to three more. Now I'm tired. So I go back in, like, OK, thank you, Jesus. Let me go to sleep <laughs> and uh, lay down. This time, I do not even fall asleep. Say, attention. I go back in, attention. Three new guys. <laughs> and they don't look so happy. But they ask the same question. I'm thinking, you want to know answers? Go ask these other guys. I already tell you. <laughs> but they are not interested in truth. This is old Russian tactic called sleep deprivation. They don't want to hear truth. They want to keep me from, they're going to break me down. Every night, they keep me up. When I try to catch cat naps, they come by, well, save attention. They come and bombard me with questions. How long you go without eating? Maybe you get sick, you go 24 hours. I know you Baptists, we, 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 don't, we don't fast, we feast. <laughs> One day, two days. I am a young man with high metabolism. I came here to, to run, exercise, serve my country. You know, after three days, your stomach gets like, norm, like, it, like it can't go smaller. But you still have appetite. I think of Mama's fritters. Sometimes I come in and stand at attention, they're eating corn chips and different things in front of me. Four days, five days. And I, again, I am tempted to, to again, feel sorry more for myself. I'm, maybe I starve to death. I, that's a terrible way to die. But I am witness. My body belongs to whom? I am bought with a price. When I surrendered to Jesus, I didn't get nice fire insurance policy. I surrendered and repented. And now he owns me. 
six days, seven days. After seven days, they called me into Captain Yarmick's office again. I remember he was standing looking out the window. He whirled around. Mosev, you are impudent. You are insubordinate. You are the kind of trash and rabble that our society is going to get rid of in this culture. It's your kind of mythological, old-fashioned beliefs that keep, keep young people stupefied. You have defied my orders for seven days. What kind of martyr are you? Nobody knows in Moldova what you're. No one cares who you are at your church. They don't know what you're going through. You haven't eaten. You're, are you ready to sign the papers? Captain Yarmick, sir. Last night, I was in my room. And I was very hungry, sir. I'm also very tired. I'm not getting so much sleep. I think he knows that. But I lay down, and I have amazing sleep. And I feel, first of all, like I'm filled with seven-course meal. I lay down, and I have a dream of Jesus. Jesus speaks to me in dreams. He's very close to me, sir. I believe more in Jesus now than when I went in. And when I wake up, there is a sparrow on my windowsill. Sir, I am... I am praying for this army. I am praying for my comrades. I am praying for you, sir. I cannot sign the papers. You know, there is a great verse that says, God knows how much we can endure. He will not test us above what we are able. I don't know how long I am going to stay in there. But Jesus is author and finisher of our faith. If he's author at salvation and finisher at great resurrection, I say we let him write chapters in between. Even if it's persecution. And I don't know what's going to happen, but God knows. And on Captain Yarmick's desk were papers that says, if anything happens to this private mosaic, his blood is on your head. I don't know. But after seven days, they let me go back. And so I am suddenly back with my, with my squad and my, and my division. And all my guys, they say, Vanya, where have you been? What happened? Oh, I have to sign papers. What papers? We didn't have to sign papers like that. Do you, you believe in God? <laughs> my grandma used to believe in God. Why didn't you sign the papers? Oh, but I am back exercising. I am eating. Oh, even army food is good after seven days. <laughs> Whew. And I remember I'm out doing PT, and we're doing running, and, and Sasha comes up beside me and says, On vascris. She goes, oh, I thought first he said something about rain. On vascris. Oh, that means nothing to you. On vascris is Russian. That means he is risen. It's like first church writing fish in sand. He is risen. He is risen. You think, I, I think I am all alone. I am in division, 2,000 men. Middle of Soviet Union. But I am not alone. I am not alone. You know, the Bible says if one walks by himself and falls down, who is there to help him up? One of Satan's great tactics is to isolate you. And some of you say, well, I can't share this burden or I can't share this problem. They don't understand my situation. If you get isolated and Satan got you alone, you become target and no one to pick you up. I'm not saying come up and confess everything to you, but you need each other. That is why we are church. That is why we are body. Oh, you Americans, you're so independent. You're too prideful to confess sins and be healed. But God gives me Sasha. And in the evenings, we sit in corner and we pretend to play chess. Our eyes are open, but we are praying to each other. Sasha says, Vanya, are you okay? I, I saw them come to get you last night. Are they beating you? No, no, they're just asking more questions. They try to interrogate me. They want me to sign the papers. I was praying for you, brother. Thank you, Sasha. Pray for you, too. And you know I need those prayers because the next week they bring me to Major Gedenko. Major Gudenko's father is one of original Bolsheviks.
Major Gdenko is veteran in the Great Patriotic War, you call World War II. Major Gdenko tried a grandfather approach, the Musaev at ease. He says, you from Moldova? Yes, sir. Hmm. Father a farmer? Yes, sir. Good country there, I've been there. You get homesick? Sometimes, sir, not, not so bad. Do you write letters home? I don't have so much time to write letters, sir. I spend lots of time answering questions. <laughs> well, Mosev, actually, that's why I called you in here. I understand that there seems to be a problem, and I've gone over your background and history. You did very well in boot camp. You even won, a, you won high marksmanship and riflery. Do you want to serve your country? Oh, yes, sir, very much, sir. Well, then I'm not sure what the problem is in signing these papers. I mean, these papers are typical teaching. You certainly have learned in school, heard, th heard this teaching in high school. This should be nothing new to you, should not be offensive to you. But, sir, papers tell me to believe in there is no God. And I, I very much believe in God, sir. <laughs> Mosea. When you are a child, you believe in Santa Claus. You believe in the tooth fairy. You believe in God. <laughs> you know, wh when you become a man, you put away childish things. I think I hear some, that somewhere before. <laughs> they must say there's no place for God. We are building a society that doesn't need God. We, we understand that the scientific phenomena was, was why they ascribed God to these things that now can be explained. Scientifically, technologically, there's, there's no place for God. Oh, sir, the Bible says that God, you do you have a Bible, Mosea? No, sir. Good, good. The Bible has no place in the life of Soviet youth. I understand that the Bible has a lot of stories and, and, and tells you to help people. It's kind of full of good things like that, but honestly, the Bible's full of errors. I mean, Mosea, it's, uh, again, it's not scientific. You think about walking on water. That doesn't happen. That's not, that's not real. Turning water into wine. You don't think our scientists... In Moscow, wouldn't have learned how to turn water into wine if that was possible. <laughs> it's full of errors, must save it. The Bible is not for today. Oh, sir, the Bible changes lives, sir. The Red Army changes lives, Mosef. I didn't bring you in here to give me a Sunday school lecture. You will sign these papers. Grandfather approaches is over. You want to talk about God? Where was God when we rolled into Nipipetrovsk? The fascist rounded up the Jews, and they hosed them down to the blood swelled, ground swelled their blood for a week. They're Jewish. They believe in God. God didn't help them. We rolled into Berlin. We lost 100,000 men, Mosaic. We didn't have a Bible study. It was our sweat. It was our blood. It was our steel that took that city. You don't talk to me about God. There is no God, and you will sign those papers. I will do what my conscience allows me to do, sir. Mosea, I will make an example of you. Immediately after supper, you will stand in the courtyard. And you will stand at attention until you acquiesce to my demands. You will sign these papers. Dismissed. And I turn to go and as I got near the door, he said, Mosef, do you understand my orders? Yes, sir, I, after supper, I am to stand in the courtyard at attention until I sign papers, sir. But you are to do so in summer dress. Now, this is February. We're in Russia. I don't even have summer. I went down to where they issue uniform. I said, I need some summer dress. They said, you don't get that issued till May. I said, no, it's Major's orders. They laughed at me. They said, you're trying to pull some prank. Get out of here. I said, no, no, I can't go until you call Major. They said, get out of here. I said, I will not go until you call Major. They called the Major, and I got my summer dress. And after supper, I was in the courtyard at attention. It's cold. And I see my comrades walk by. They say, what is Vanya doing? I don't know. He must be in trouble again. 
And I know what it's like to freeze to death because I've read Russian literature. You lose feeling in fingers and toes. It goes into your limbs and gets to your trunk and you fall asleep and you don't wake up. And I don't want to die. I want to live. I want to get married. I want to have family. But when I repented, I gave Jesus my life. It wasn't just a nice thing to make me happy. He died for me. He deserves all I give him. And I see the lights go out in the barracks, so I know it's 10 o'clock. Soon I don't feel my fingers. I'm not allowed to move. I said, Lord Jesus, I don't want to die. But I know that I am living sacrifice. I will worship you with my body. That's, that's, what, that's what I'll do. I'll pray. If I go into Jesus' presence, I go talking to him. And so I begin to pray. I pray for Sergeant Strelkov. I pray for Major Gudenko. I pray for Captain Yarmik. I pray for Sasha. And I pray. And I pray. I don't know what time it is. But I think around midnight, three commanding officers come out. They say, Mosea, what are you doing? Following orders, sir. We know you're following orders. Do you know how cold it is out here? No, sir. It's 10 degrees. Oh, I wish they had not so told me. <laughs> yes, sir, I'm sure. It's, it's very cold, sir. But you can see I am praying, and my God is keeping me from freezing. I see them look at each other because they have no scientific answer. And they leave me alone. And I keep praying. And I pray. At 2 o'clock, commanding officer comes out. Mosev, what are you doing? Following orders, sir. At ease. Back to your barracks. And by it's so cold, I'm not sure I can walk. But as I stumble back, this officer, he walks a little way away. And in low voice, he says, Mosea, tell me about this girl. And I'm so cold. I'm so tired. I trust Holy Spirit to make intercession there. But for the first time, for the first time, somebody really wants to know. He's not interrogating me. He's not writing it down. You know what difference is? I tell you difference. He wants to see living. Example of living God. People out here, they don't want your theology. They don't need lots of nice doctrine. They want to know, how do you live? How do you overcome broken promises? How do you overcome pornography? How do you overcome when people steal from you or rob you or disable you? How do you forgive? That's supernatural. You'll never stand in the Russian courtyard. And suffer. But Bible says the eyes of the Lord run to and fro through the whole earth, searching for those whose hearts are perfect towards Him, on whose behalf He can show Himself strong. That's you. That's you. He's writing something in your life, He's doing something through your suffering. It's not just to punish you and be cruel, He's good, Daddy. But He wants you to have life message that proves he is living God, that his grace sustained you, that his grace delivered you, that his presence fortified you. The next morning, my comrades, they said, Lonnie, what were you doing out there? You're crazy. Why, what, why are you? I said, I have to sign papers. What papers? These papers must be crazy. You are an idiot. No, I think he's got southern blood. Someone else, no, no, I'm from Moldova. I'm not going out there. 
They say, you going out there again? I say, I think I have to go out again tonight. What? Finally, you're supposed to get down to zero. I, but I will pray. <laughs> you pray? That's why I don't freeze last night. Oh, I don't know about it. You're crazy. And you know, sometimes they think you're crazy. You know, not everyone has to understand your obedience to God. Right? But what is interesting, world is watching. And later on in day, that morning they all gather around, they make fun of me. But later on, Anton comes to me, says, Vanya, listen, you say you're praying out there. Can you pray for my sister? She has cancer. Sure, Anton. Later I'm down at Latrine and Alex says, Vanya, if you're going to pray, can you pray for my dad? He's, he's an alcoholic. Sure, all right. And so the next night, I am out here again. And this time I have more to pray for. And I see them watch me. They are not laughing anymore, some of them. They know I'm praying for their sister. They know I'm praying for their papa. Do you pray for any lost people? I know we want them to be saved, but they need to see living example of great God. Zero is cold. But I'm praying. Three nights. Four nights. They're going to break me down. Five nights. Some people ask me, Vanya, why don't you just sign papers? God is gracious. He don't, he's, he, he forgive you. I know God is good. But Jesus said, if you, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father and the holy angels. But if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my Father and the holy angels. I can't sign the papers. Six nights. Seven nights. One night, it gets down to 12 below zero. But I don't fall down. And my comrades, they're talking. They said, Vanya, you're crazy. How can you do it? Someone says, hey, let's bet another 20 rubles like we did last night. No way, I've lost enough money on him. Oh, come on, it's going to get colder. You, you know the medical personnel will have to come out and resuscitate him. Come on. No, he's got that southern blood. No, no, I don't have southern blood. I'm cold. I'm tired. But I am praying. That's why I don't fall down. I don't know what your suffering is. But Bible says to commit keeping of your soul unto him who is faithful creator. That's, that's key to remember who is faithful. After 12 nights, Major Gedenko called it off. You know why? Because God was getting too much credit. It's going around the whole camp. Vanya's going out again. Let's make a bet. No way. His God keeps him. His God keeps him. All officers, all men, that God is amazing. Do you know he'll stand out there? He doesn't freeze. This is supernatural. <gasps> Major Gedenko says, I'll make example of you. Please make example of my God. He is all powerful. He is able to save. His hand is not short. His ear is not dull. He knows where his children are. He knows where you are. Honestly, this present affliction is nothing to be compared to the glory. I know it's Sunday night, you have a long day, you need to go, but they don't know what to do with me, so they send me to Siberia. I don't have time to go into it, but they, they actually write on my papers, able to withstand cold. Oh, in Siberia, that doesn't stop them. They put me under running water, and they just run cold water over me for a half hour till I go into hypothermia. They pull me out. They throw me in a chair. Sign the papers, boy. Sign the papers, and we'll give you a warm bath. You can go back to your division. I am so cold, I can't pick up the pencil. 
They put me in the room that is basically air compressor. I hear them turn on the switch, and the little microphone says, sign the papers or you will be in here every day. And suddenly it gets heavier and heavier. I feel like elephant on my chest. I will be in here as long as my God wants. And then I pass out. They're watching in a little window and come open the door and shake me so oxygen goes back to my brain. And then they turn on the switch again. You know, if you come to Christians so you get nice, comfortable, easy life, you need to get new perspective. This is not about how I get nice things. We are living for eternity. We're looking for a kingdom not made with hands. This is not your Lord's kingdom. They said they would keep me there for seven years. I knew I would not live that long. But again, Jesus knows what you can take. He knows where you are. In six weeks, they stamped my papers, unable to re-educate, and sent me back to base. I got back. I don't look so good. My friends say, Ron, you look terrible. Where have you been? I was in Sverdlovsk. Oh, Sverdlovsk, Siberia, done yet. We don't go there for vacation. But I've returned. That is supernatural to them too. And I begin to, actually it is not me. God uses my life. God uses my life. We have to speak and live. But it's his power. I don't know. I, I like to try to convince people that God exists, but that still doesn't make them repent. They've got to have an encounter with living God. Praise God he wants to use you and me, right? I'll, I'll let me tell one more story. Again, I know it's late. Let me tell one story. I don't see anyone falling asleep. So. And you're not so cold, right? Oh, I come back, and I am worn out. They don't know what to do with me. They're frustrated with me, but I am tired. And we, have, we, have, we have classes, and this class nobody likes. It's basic tenets of communist Leninism. And I, even professor I don't think like so much. He is always late. So this morning I'm laying there with my head on the table because I'm, I'm tired. I've only been back maybe two weeks. And we have class clown. His name is the Vladimir Abu from, from Kazakhstan. He says, oh, right, here we are in our favorite class, the basic tenets of Marxist Leninism. And the teacher isn't here. Huh. You know, we always hear about what the father of our country, Vladimir Ilyich Lenin, said would happen if we followed his principles. But we have a guy that sits out there in the snow, freezes his hind end off, and we don't know what he believes. Banya, come on, tell us the other side. Tell us why communism's not no, no, no good. Now, I've been told, keep mouth shut, right? But Bible say, be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you, right? With meekness and fear. Oh, I have the fear. I've been to Siberia. I said, well... Honestly, honestly, the reason I do not fall down is because I do pray. And God is all-powerful. I can't explain why I don't fall down. I can't explain why my body doesn't. I, I, it, is, it is his spirit keeps me. Because he is creator, he can do what he wants. He's all-powerful. And someone laughs, someone throws pencil. But Vladimir Abu wants to hear. So I said, and also, the Bible says God is love. God loves me. But really, God loves, God loves all of you. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That, <laughs> come on, Vanya. And we look over, and by the doorway is First Corporal Pyotr Prokhorov. He's smoking cigarettes. Come on. You're telling me that God loves everyone. You, so you're saying God loves me? <laughs> and I said, that's right. Oh, and then everybody laughs, because... Pyotr Prokhorov, he's not kind of guy that, you know, maybe mama loves, and that's all. Now, you laugh a little bit, but you know why God loves you? It's not because you're lovable, right? It's his nature. And so, I say yes, and that makes people laugh. And First Corporal Pyotr Prokhorov says, okay, Vanya, I'll tell you what. If your God loves me, I'm... Yeah, I, let, let's have him prove it, because you say he's all-powerful. In fact, if your God proves that he loves me and that he has power, I'll become one of you. What do you call yourselves? Christians or believers? I, whatever you are, I'll be one of you. <laughs> In fact, I kinda, I'm kind of i tired of being here. I'd like to go home for my leave. 
Uh, I'd like my two-week leave tomorrow. Okay, if God can do that, I'll, be, I'll believe in him. <laughs> now, you're wondering what's the big deal. We are right in the middle of session. You get leave maybe two, three months ahead of time. It's staggered. It's scheduled. It's not, he's not going to get it. And so Vladimir Vu says, whoa, Peter Prokhorov wants to see God's big power. Let's see what God can do. And they're laughing and mocking. And the Holy Spirit says, tell him he's going home. And I said, now wait a minute. If I tell him he's going home, and he, God, he won't go home. Tell him he's going home. Now, I don't make this light. I've been through big persecution, and Holy Spirit speaks to me. I mean, I've, I, I've had some very intense moments with God, same voice. Tell him he's going home. I said, Lord, if he doesn't go home, it's going to make you look bad. You ever worry about making God look bad? I said, I said Lord, tell him he's going home. And so I stand up. Oh, then they're all quiet. I says, go to Prokhorov. My God says that he will show his power and you will go home tomorrow. But you must stop smoking. Now I know what you are thinking. You don't have to stop smoking to go to heaven. That if you smoke, maybe you go to heaven sooner. Okay? But Theodor Prokhorov, he does not know anything about God. He does not know anything about Jesus. And sometimes I think we have this problem in America that Jesus is nice smorgasbord, and I can take what I want, take what I want, it's there for me. And I tell you, we surrender. We give our lives, we repent. And now I throw the ball back to him. And he takes his cigarette, crushes it out, takes pack out, and hits trash can. Vladimir Bush says, whoa, if you're a program, I'm going to quit smoking, I'm going to become a Christian, I'm going to go home tomorrow. And then the professor comes in. Well, it's funny because even though I am under discipline because I'm a farm boy, I have lots of experience with tractors and trucks, so I, it's my job to run bread truck. So I have to get up early the next morning and run bread truck. And I remember getting off bread truck, and three or four of my comrades, I said, Vanya, that was so cool, that was great. I said, what are you talking about? Oh, this morning, oh, you weren't there. You won't believe what happened. Right there at breakfast, Colonel came in, had a funny look on his face, said, I have a leave, effective immediately. For first Corporal Pyotr Prokhorov. You should have seen Prokhorov. He was sitting at breakfast. He jumped up. Woohoo! Vanya was right. Vanya was right. We'll see you turkeys later. Vanya was right. He hot-tailed it down to the terminal, got his ticket, took up. Oh, Vanya. When they heard him talking about you, they checked out. They found out what happened yesterday. Oh, Vanya, you're in trouble. They peeled out of here on two wheels trying to catch Prokhorov. They raced down there to the train station just in time to see his train leave. Ha <laughs> ha! You did it, man. You pulled it off. No, no, no. We prayed. Remember? I don't know what you did. That was really cool. You know, everyone wants to get one on the brass. I said, no, no. It wasn't me. Prokhorov went back to Armenia. He went and found Baptist church. He walks in. They are scared. He is a soldier. He said, no, no. Listen, what happened? Do you have a Bible? They teach Prokhorov. And you know what he does? He repents. He surrenders under living God, who is all loving. God owes him nothing except condemnation. But he is merciful and loving, not willing that then he should perish, even communist smokers. After two weeks, he comes back, my brother. Oh, I go in for more interrogation. Who do you know in Odessa? You know someone in Odessa. You pulled this off. You planned this. I don't know anyone in Odessa. You do. Family member, relative, schoolmate. How, how did you? You will go back to Siberia. I don't know anyone in Odessa. Don't lie to us. I know someone someone higher. I tried to share my story. I'm not, I'm not finished. There's lots more, but maybe we tell more of that in heaven. Let's, let's bow our heads. Let's bow our heads. I'm going to pray in a minute, but it is June 1972, and now KGB are involved. 
I have been almost two years, almost two years, and I have not signed papers. They cannot let me graduate. It makes them look bad. I am in small room, cement block room. And they're interrogating me. Who do I know in Odessa? Why don't you sign the papers? You will not go home. You will go back to Siberia. But I've heard this so many times. Suddenly, one of them grabs him by the lapels, and he throws me against the wall. He screams, and he swears. And he spits in my face. He lets go of me, and I reach up to wipe spit off my face. And <clears throat> oh, suddenly, someone has hit me. Oh, they hit me again. And I bend over, and oh, I get one in the face, and I crumple to the floor. Suddenly they are around me, kicking me in my face with their Russian steel-toe boots. I try to cover my face, but they go around and they kick me in the kidneys and try to step on my kneecaps. They pull me back to my feet and one holds me. Blood is coming out of my nose, but now they hit me and they hit me and they punch me in the face. And I try to move and cry out. They hit me over and over. I forgive them. Because blessed are they that are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner against you evil. All manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets. Maybe some of you are scared of persecution. Maybe some of you are scared of Muslims or changes in government. Fear not, little flock. It is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Don't tell me you are following Jesus if you can't forgive the people who hurt you. I know everyone sitting here has someone when they were in school, that hurts them. Painful memory. Maybe you need to give that to Jesus. Say, dear Jesus, take this pain and put it on your cross. I forgive. They beat me. They beat me. They beat me. And that night, they take my life. Don't feel sorry for me. I belong to the King. I belong to Jesus and precious in the eyes of the death of his saints. I do not look at the things which are seen, for the things which are seen are temporal. I look at the things that are unseen, for they are eternal. Jesus is worthy of everything I can give him. Father in heaven, tonight I've tried to share Vanya's story. She's not here to share it. But Lord, you've given us a cloud of witnesses. You've given us a history of men and women millions of whom we don't know their names, but they were faithful unto death. And they counted their lives not worthy for your sake. Lord Jesus, I don't know people here at this church. I, I don't know what you might have said to them, but I know you well enough that you knock on the door of our heart and you ask us to surrender. If you're here tonight and your salvation experience was just a nice prayer, that's okay. We are not, none of us are good enough theologians to know exactly what goes on in the spirit. We read the word of God, we, 
We understand what it means to be born again. We know what it means to be redeemed. But how the Spirit of God transforms a sinner, we, we can't explain that any more than we can explain the biological development of a cell, of a child. We know it happens, don't we? But if you've ever doubted your salvation, because maybe you didn't say the right words, or the enemies kind of kept you under bondage because you, you know, well, maybe I was too little. I want to assure you tonight that he is a merciful, gracious God. And it is not a crime or a shame or a slap to him if we just come and we surrender anew. And maybe you're sure of your salvation. Maybe there's no doubt there, but you're struggling with some areas that haven't been surrendered. Don't you want Jesus to be Lord as well as Savior? He's a great Savior. Do you know how great a Lord He is? You think, well, if I, if I surrender everything, maybe I'll suffer like that, or maybe I'll be rejected, or maybe I'll have to go somewhere I don't want to go, or do something I don't want to do. Well, that's why He's Lord, isn't He? No matter what kind of suffering we go through, and I just got to tell you, it doesn't matter what you hold on to. We're all going to suffer. Suffering is part of a broken planet. It's part of the curse. But it's also an amazing instrument that God uses to refine us and prepare us for eternity, to change our perspective, to refine us like gold. He's the potter. Let him make your heart. Let him make your life. I don't have a specific prayer that you need to pray. But I encourage you tonight, if there's something that he wants you to surrender, that you would put it on the altar. And you say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, this belongs to you. I could give you a prayer. I could give you direction, but I'm not your Holy Spirit. He does a much better job of convicting than I do. Say, yes, Lord, I surrender. Here, Lord, I give it to you. If it's a fear or a hurt or an offense, put it on Jesus' cross. He bore our sorrows. He wants to take them. If it's a fear, put it in his loving hands. He can handle it. Trade your fear for peace. I don't know if you've ever prayed and asked, told Jesus that you would be willing to suffer for his sake. We have had such a free and amazing country here in the United States that we're lackadaisical, we're Laodicean. That might change in 10 years. It might change in 50 years. I'm not hoping for persecution from this country. But we can't keep shaking our national fist in God's moral law and escape judgment. But are you willing? Are you willing to suffer affliction with the people of God rather than to enjoy the riches of Egypt? Have you ever told Jesus that? Say, Lord Jesus, I'm willing to suffer affliction for righteousness' sake. Stand by me. Give me the grace. But my body is yours. Again, Father in heaven, I look to you and I pray to you and I can only trust that you are building altars. You are God. It is you that has made us and not we ourselves. As great as Vanya was and as faithful as he was, it was your presence that anointed him. It was your spirit that quickened him. It was your loving embrace that welcomed him into glory. Well done, good and faithful servant. Lord Jesus, I want to hear that someday. I want to be embraced by you. These people do too. Lead us in your way everlasting. For yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. And yours is the glory forever, Jesus.
Vanya's body was shipped home. It was in a closed casket, and it was a felony to open the casket. As soon as the KGB left, they opened his body and took photographs of his body. The army said he had been drowned, and he'd been tortured and killed. To eradicate his memory, the army dissolved the division there in Kerch. But, you know, it backfired. I mean, imagine being out there in the Kamchatka Peninsula, and all of a sudden this new guy shows up and says, well, we're right in the middle of training. What are you doing here? Well, he said, I was stationed in Kerch. And you won't believe, we had the strange thing. We had this guy from Moldova. And Vanya's story basically permeated almost the entire Red Army in 1972. I mean, this closed, implacable country gets lit up by one person. You don't know what God wants to do with your suffering. You don't know what he has in store for your life. Vanya's story is still going out. As late as Mikhail Gorbachev, 1986, the KGB was still rounding up people with the last name of Moseev, trying to find out who he knew in Odessa. Right? 14 years later, perestroika glasnost. I lived in Russia for five years, and I studied the persecuted church, and I remember I read this book, and I wept. I wept, because he's not here to tell it. I said, oh, Lord, I wish he was here. And the Holy Spirit sort of prompted me. He said, well, why don't you tell his story? I said, well, Lord, I, you know, I'm, I'm the roofer. But one of the men we led to Christ gave me this uniform, this is authentic Soviet uniform. And the Lord says, you got the uniform, now go tell the story. It's humbling to me because it's not my story. I'm convicted sometimes, and I don't cry dramatically. I'm moved. Someday I'm going to meet this guy. And we're all going to point to Jesus, though, aren't we? We're all going to point to Jesus and say, he's the Lord. Um, I carry this book with me. I, I buy it wholesale, and you can get it on Amazon, but if you want a copy, it's $10. Okay, I'm not trying to be real commercial, but a lot of times people said, hey, where do you get that book? Where can you read more? I got them down in the lobby, and they just give me $10, and they put it down there. Um, if you're interested in more, kind of about what I do, I'm still working in the Soviet Union. I live in Georgia, but I go overseas two or three times a year. I just got back in Ukraine. We took a team over. Russia is closing down. It's not atheistic communism, but it's nationalism. Um, and I send out a newsletter uh, that it doesn't ask for money. It's not a money thing. I just feel like good news from a far country is like cold water to a thirsty soul. And we get plenty of bad news. So I'm working with over 100 different pastors that are still over there in Russia, Gruzia, Kazakhstan, if you want to get that email, I've got a chart down there. Just give me your email. Um, this is free. This tells a little bit about our ministry and how we're involved and how we support national people and different opportunities. Um, it's a little old, so some of, the, some of the addresses have changed. But again, good news. You can take that for free. I want to thank Pastor and Bobby Reed for opening up the door. Um, again, it's not my story, but the testimony of the Lord rejoice the heart. Thank you. Let's stand together, shall we, with our heads bowed. Powerful, powerful testimony. I thought of the verse in Hebrews 11 that says, And he being dead, yet speaketh. I know his testimony touched my heart. I believe it touched other people's hearts tonight. And as he said, God has spoken to your heart. I want you to have an opportunity to respond to him and physically come to an altar and bow the knee. Maybe it's a surrender that you've never done. Maybe you accepted him as your savior and you've never really surrendered your life to God. Oh, you've sung all to Jesus, I surrender. But have you ever done that and really meant it from your heart? With our heads bowed and our eyes closed as you ask God what he would have you to do, I'm gonna have just Lisa play the piano <clears throat> and as she begins to play the invitation hymn, God has spoken to your heart and want you to respond to him. You respond tonight, will you? That's right. That's right. That's right.
All right, look this way if you would. Brother Dean, thank you. Wonderful. Man, that's powerful stuff. It really is. The power of a testimony. You know, sometimes as Americans, we think that we're all that. And then you hear what Christians in other parts of the world and what they, the cost they pay to be a Christian. And I uh, think one day you get to heaven, we're going to think we're right up in the front line and the Lord's going to say, I'll step back for a minute, will you? And we're going to have some folks come up that no one's ever heard of. Oh, they've heard of Vanya now uh, because Brother Kirstner is keeping that alive and uh, keeping his testimony known. But uh, I tell you, that's, a, that's powerful. I'd like to read the book. And, uh, but that was, that was wonderful. And uh, it is, there is much more to that. Uh, the one I saw on the YouTube, and you can go look at it if you want. It's, it's what, an hour? It was about an hour and 20 minutes or so. Uh, version there that he went through and I mean uh, uh, being hospitalized I saw that part hospitalized and they were ready to cut his arm off because gangrene had set in but he prayed and they came the next day to get him ready for surgery and he had to show them that God has healed him and that was a testimony and uh, again because you can't explain it there's no scientific explanation it was just God uh, wow great great Great, great. Enjoyed it and uh, convicted by it and, uh, and yet at the same time challenged to live for God. Amen? Amen. And uh, let's, let's let our light shine. All right, let's pray together, shall we? Father, thank you for a wonderful, wonderful day and Lord capped off by this wonderful night tonight. Thank you for the testimony of this uh, soldier, this Christian, a Christian soldier who stood for you. And Lord, it, it helps us and encourages us to stand for Christ, and I pray you'll help us to do that. Lord, help us to draw close to you and draw nigh to you, to have a passion for you as this young man did. And Lord, I pray you'd use us to let your light shine through us to others in a dark world. We love you. We thank you for a wonderful day in the house of God. Thank you for 61 years of being faithful to Bible Baptist Church. May we be faithful to you. Use us this week now, Lord. Dismiss us with your care. Make us mindful you go with us from this place. Lord, please, may others see Christ in us this week. And we pray and ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Let's sing together, shall we? <clears throat> it's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. Let's hear you sing it. It's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. It's a grand thing to follow Jesus anywhere and everywhere I go. For it's a grand thing to be a soldier in his army here below. It's the grandest thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. God bless you. You are dismissed.